Hey big strappers, another large car video coming at you. In today's video, I'm going to show you a 1980 359 Peterbilt with a 3408 cat engine, a five and four set of sticks, built, custom built by the legendary Lettuce King. Hey there big strappers, today's video is brought to you by GP Transco, a great midsize carrier out of Illinois. These guys do things a little bit different from the other carriers and pay drivers really well. So if you're an experienced driver and want to earn big while being treated with respect, check their information out in the description below. Thank you drivers so much for tuning in today and enjoy the video. Now the Lettuce King built this truck to be his personal ride and he built it in his own backyard. Let me tell you something about the Lettuce King that you may not know. He is by far and away one of the handiest guys with a set of tools I have ever known. He can strip them down, take them apart, fix them up, put them back together, and he can do that with anything with a set of wheels on it. But his favorite type of project is a 359 Peterbilt. And after he's put those back together again when he's done, he's always got a faster, cooler, lower truck. I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step video showing the build of this truck. The first thing he did was find a truck that he could use for parts. In this case, the truck was a day cab that came out of Missouri. Now luckily, it already had both the engine and the two sticks in it, so he was off to a good start. Now it was a day cab, came as a day cab, so the fun begins after that. He's got to cut it open, add a bunk, follow along. Now the first thing he needed was a parts truck to start with. So he floated this truck, which is uh, just exactly what he was looking for. He lucked into it. He floated this truck home 800 miles from Missouri so he could start the build. In this picture, you can see evidence of how, how really good a shape this truck was already in when he bought it. Now, as I said, it was a day cab. He's gonna have to modify that, but you can see in this picture, the 3408 engine, and they were white back in the day. In this picture, you can see that this had already been someone's custom ride from the days gone by. You can see the full gauge package. You can see the Corvette dash, the chrome steeler steering column, and there in the bottom right, there's the set of sticks. Now here's a picture of the five and the four shift pattern. An awful lot of guys won't be aware of how the shift pattern works. But you'll see on the main box, which is the box on the left, reverses up at the top left, then it goes one, two, three, does a horseshoe over, or a U, for five. Five, the top gear being up against the dash. On the auxiliary box, one, two, three for the U shape or the horseshoe again, and four up against the dash. Hence the saying, both sticks to the wall. Now a lot of guys were under the impression that you had to shift these by, by looping your arm through the steering wheel and shift them at the same time. You didn't have to do that at all. That's a wives tale. You could shift one and then the other. Now mastering a set of sticks is, is certainly a skill set because you've got to learn the truck and where the revs are at any given time to understand what gears you need to be in. So it takes some practice. And you see a guy that's really smooth with a set of sticks like that? That's a skill set that very few guys have anymore. Now it needed a bunk and he ended up finding a bunk, the bunk size that he wanted at another scrapyard at a later date. The bunks for that year came with small holes to enter from, from the cab, like a crawl through hole, a crawl space. So he's had to cut out the back of the bunk here to modify it to make it big enough so you could walk between the bunk and the cab rather than have to hop up and crawl through backwards. Here's another good shot of the 3408 engine and you can see it already had stainless breathers on it, twin stainless breathers. So that was a real bonus, saved him a lot of money there. Here's, here's the back of the cab of the truck where he's cut open after he's cut open the opening so he can mesh that bunk up and he'll have a walk through into bunk. So here's an interesting picture. You can see if you study it closely that he's taken the cab, unbolted it from the frame rails and slid the cab back. And this will accommodate the room that he needs to mount a longer hood in later days to come. Note also in the background there behind the cab, another 359 project build on the go. Here's the cab moved back from another angle. And you can tell from this perspective just how long that hood is going to be so it closes over the front and meets the cab. Here's the new hood 
with new aluminum panels under construction. Now for those of you that know Pete's, if you look behind the wheel well, that's probably the best spot to see the evidence of the cab stretch. It's about twice what the ordinary footprint is there on that part of the cab. Here's the new hood fitted and mounted onto the frame over the engine and meeting the cab. Another perspective of the hood mount, but you can see in this picture how much longer that hood is than a factory hood. Here's the frame cut behind the cab. You can see he's chopped the rails there. He's getting there ready to stretch the rails and extend the wheelbase. Here are the frame rails extended on and welded to the new set of clips, the new set of drives that he wants to mount on onto the truck. There, note, note the drive shaft hanging down. He's going to need to replace that drive shaft to get a longer one to reach forward into the transmissions. Here's the Lettuce King using a backhoe to move around the clip so he can mount the clip and weld the frames together. And uh, he, he went for this new clip because it is a low leaf air ride, much smoother ride than the factory air track clip. A picture of the build in progress. You can see now that he's got the whole thing welded together on the frame. You can see the length the truck's going to be and how long again the hood is. It gives you a perspective of just how big this truck is going to be. There again, another picture showing the length that this truck is going to end up being at the end of the build. Note now that he's, he's removed the fuel tanks. He's getting ready to polish them up, sand them down, and then paint them. The truck from a side angle, he's replacing glass. He's got the breathers off. He's taken that hose and tubing system apart, and he's just getting ready to assemble everything. He's got to assemble it in a certain order as he paints the pieces. Here's a shot of after he's painted the cab. You can note too from seeing this picture that he's gutted the interior already so he won't get get paint all over a new interior so that's the order he's done it in. Here she is coming together he's got the painted visor on the cab's painted he's remounted the stainless breathers it's it's coming you can see now he's still got to work on the drives but the back there he's just got that so he can move it around those those tires but it's coming. Here she is out on the street with the bunk mounted now gives you an idea of the size the truck is He's got to mount the hood yet, put on the fuel tanks, install the proper rear tires, but he's getting there. Here she is nearing completion and it's starting to look pretty sharp. Notice he's, he's painted the engine yellow, Caterpillar yellow. He's got the bunk all polished up and he's mounted the stacks, the straight pipes on the sides. Got the fuel tanks painted and installed. She's starting to look large. Another picture as she comes together. It's pretty much done at this point. It's getting there. He's got the new drives mounted as you can see. It's all hooked up, pretty much ready to go. He's got to put the hood back on. He's painting the hood at this stage. Paints the hood, installs it, and he should be ready to go. Here she is at the first truck show before he takes it off to work. He's, uh, he's pretty proud of it. He's getting a lot of looks. Another shot at the local truck show, showing off his latest creation. There she is all hooked up, looking pretty large. Here's a picture of the Lettuce King's new ride with both his kids in the picture. Here's a picture of the Lettuce King. The, with the polished up, rebuilt 3408 Caterpillar engine. They were, they were the large car engine of the day to have. Caterpillar rated them somewhere around 450 horsepower. The truth of the matter is that they were well over 500 just from the factory. And after the Lettuce King tweaked it here and there, she was putting over 600 to the ground. Now he's built so many of these cool 359s over the years that frankly I've kind of lost count about how many there were. And what he would do is build them, work them for a while, ride around and enjoy them, and then sell them and start building another one. After showing off his latest build at the local truck show, he headed off to work the truck. And he drove this truck for a while, but he likes building them as much as he likes driving them. So he drove this for a while, then he sold it and started another one. What better way to end this video than with a Lettuce King story? Now in his hunt across the countryside for parts, he had a few adventures trying to get these parts home to build the truck. One of my favorite stories was he had loaded a load of lettuce in Yuma. And he was on his way home and he ran across, somewhere in Arizona, he ran, at a, ran across a 359 cab that he wanted to bring home. So he bought it, but he had to figure out how to get it into the trailer. The trailer's loaded with lettuce. And somehow he ends up talking the shipper the, down at where he bought the cab to unload 
oh, I don't know, six pallets of lettuce. They turned the cab in sideways, stuffed it in the back of the trailer, and then the lettuce king had to get the lettuce back in. So he does it hand by hand, box by box. He had the doors open on the cab. He was piling lettuce on the seat. He was piling lettuce on the hood. He was piling lettuce on the roof of the truck. Just anything to get that lettuce all back in because the shipper and the receiver knew how many boxes should be on that trailer. He got it all in, everything crammed up against the back doors, took off, trucked it home, stopped before he got to the food terminal, hand bombed all this lettuce out, took the cab back out, put the skids in, put the lettuce back on top of the skids and headed for the food terminal. And you know, we were worried that the, the guys at the food, food terminal would notice that something was off. They never noticed or if they did, they never said a word. So he got away with it. But that was a good, good story on how he got the cab home on one of those trucks. Oh, before I let you go, let me show you a big strap or something here. Be sure to get yourself one of these Lettuce King t-shirts. These things are gonna be a collector's item, I promise you. Check the link below. Take care. Keep the rubber side down, and we'll see you on the backhaul.